Coming up on Cronkite News, the local organizations working to help the hundreds of thousands of Arizona children facing food insecurity. Plus, the plan to repair potholes that has been popping up all over the state thanks to recent wet weather. How long will they take to fix? And later, the Suns advance to the second round of the playoffs. Find out why and who they will face in round two. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Melissa Munoz. And I'm Dylan Nichols. Thank you for joining us. Food insecurity remains a significant issue worldwide, including here in Arizona. Cronkite News reporter Jacob Carlisle tells us how local organizations assist individuals and families in need. He joins us now from St. Mary's Food Bank. Jacob? Many people struggle to fulfill their basic necessities, increasing their risk for food insecurity. hunger with approximately 270,000 children as Feeding America reported. Right now there's so many package. people up there that even if they work they don't have enough money uh, to buy enough food because everything there's so expensive. Alma Mendoza from Esperanza and La Frontera is helping low-income families in Phoenix. Whatever who has extra and they want to donate for a family um, so we collect the food and we provide uh, a basket for the families. St. Mary's Food Bank is also working towards addressing food insecurity in Arizona. From morning, noon to night, we're either building food boxes with our volunteers here at the warehouse, delivering food, picking up food from 400 grocery stores, or we're distributing food to about 1,500 families at our two main locations and hundreds of thousands of meals a day across the state. Feeding America reports that the food insecurity rate for Arizona in 2020 was 11.1 percent. In poverty, unemployment, or low income, lack of affordable housing, chronic health conditions, or lack of access to health care are among the causes of food insecurity. We're here for you, and it's okay to ask for help. Um, if you're in a situation where uh, you're not able to make your rent, you're not able to make your car payments, we want to be able to keep you in your house, keep you in your car so you can go back and forth. Don't be afraid to come down to the food bank, take advantage of the opportunity that we have here to help you ease some of your budget and able to uh, put it into the places where you need so you don't get in a bad situation. People in need of food can come to St. Mary's Food Bank Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. If you want to donate, you can go to the St. Mary's Food Bank website. In Phoenix, Cronkite News, Jacob Carlisle. Thank you, Jacob. On Tuesday, Arizona legislators fell five votes short of the two-thirds needed to override a vetoed bill for the first time since 1981. Bipartisan support last week made it seem lawmakers would overturn Governor Hobbs' veto of a bill that would expand the types of homemade foods Arizonans legally could sell. But Democratic leaders flipped their position just days before the vote, leading Democrat Alma Hernandez to call out her colleagues on the floor, saying, quote, they are too afraid of voting against the governor. Hobbs cited the possible spread of foodborne illnesses in her veto letter. Short-term rental owners in Chandler will see some new requirements after the state authorizes a statute. These new rules are set to start in August. Cronkite News reporter Anna Stansfield joins us now to explain what they are and how Chandler residents will be affected. Chandler is following the footsteps of other cities in the valley and making amendments to its short-term rental ordinance. The first big change is that short-term owners and operators will now be required to obtain a license from the city. And if you don't apply for a license within 30 days of receiving notice, you could face penalties. The amendments also now prohibit short-term rental properties from being occupied for non-residential uses. This means you won't be able to rent a house for a one-night party or event. Operators will also now be required to notify their neighbors, display emergency contact information, and respond to complaints from the police department. I had a few calls for service out at a uh, variety of properties throughout the city uh, dealing with nuisance complaints like noise and, and parties and underage drinking and so there was a desire to to implement um, the new statute to reflect that community desire these amendments go into effect on august 1st giving chandler residents enough time to learn about them before they're implemented at the google touch screen anna stansfield cronkite news a lawsuit in Montana could drastically alter how we fight wildfires, as one of the most popular tools is being called into question. Environmentalists are saying that fire retardant is polluting waterways. 
The group filed an injunction seeking to stop the use of fire retardant until officials with the U.S. Forest Service can get pollution permits. In court filings, the government admits that fire retardant has ended up in waterways at least 200 times in the last decade. Fire officials say the drops are critical in protecting lives and property and that stopping drops ahead of fire season could be catastrophic. The Arizona Department of Transportation has announced several projects to fix major potholes across the state. I went out to see what the department is doing to fix roads. Governor Katie Hobbs has invested $50 million into ADOT's plan to fix potholes across major highways. This money was reallocated from other project savings. Now major highways such as I-40, I-17, I-10, US-60, SR-260 and SR-77 are among those to receive the pavement work throughout the next couple of months. According to ADOT spokesperson Doug Nitzel, potholes are a common problem, but the winter weather this past year didn't help. This was a really tough winter in terms of the impact on the highways. You had a lot of snow, a lot of cold weather, and we even had the wet weather in the uh, lower elevations. That's the uh, recipe for potholes. These potholes pose a big risk for drivers. A nationwide survey by AAA in 2021 showed that potholes costed drivers about $26.5 billion in damages. It depends on what happens to the car, but on average, uh, a typical a uh, pothole that caused damages to maybe the t wheel or tire that costs about $600 per vehicle. ADOT has multiple crews and projects working to fix these road conditions. Well, our number one goal is to maintain a smooth and safe highway system. And, you know, we're always trying to do the best we can with that. ADOT encourages drivers that come across potholes to slow down. If you'd like to learn more about ADOT's upcoming projects, go to azdot.gov. For decades, there has been an effort to save the California condor from extinction. And for the most part, it's been working. But now, a new threat, an extremely contagious avian flu that's spreading quickly. But some of these infected birds are being treated right here in Arizona. Up next, how one local group is trying to save them. We hit a high of 91 degrees today and we are continuing to warm up. I'll give you more next on the full forecast. We tell ourselves stories as a nation. These stories need to be highlighted. They need to be explored. We're the dreamers. How serious is America's commitment to looking at its history? How can we learn from the past? <gasps> Douglas said, you're going to look me in the eye and see my humanity. It's illuminating. I'm seeing the expansiveness of my history. That's pretty great. There's so much richness to black life and black culture. I think the story of Muslims in America is the story of America. Tonight, they are free. I cannot imagine how excited you must have been. It's a wonderful feeling. This is why we do this. It makes me even more committed to struggling for a better world. Welcome. How utterly charming. Mm -mm. How does an English fan come to be Italian Riviera? A fresh start. Can I trust you? Are you ready for the show? You can't be afraid to show them what you've got. What do you want? Are we having a party? Of course, the more the merrier. I love this place. It's my home now. Traveling paradise. I can't do it on my own. This is revenge. There are consequences. Be careful. Nothing like this. Nothing like this. Oh. You look like you need rescue. Tell me all. What is it that you want? I just want to let go. <laughs> I choose how I live. There is the passion that I've been looking for. Temps mainly in the 80s today around the valley, but we're in for a big warm-up tomorrow. Haley Forbes is in the Cronkite Weather Center. Haley, what can we expect as we finish up our week? 
Guys, it is getting extremely toasty. 91 degrees was the high today. And looking at the upcoming week, we have a huge jump between Saturday to Sunday. We go even off the charts. So crazy warm weather coming our way, but no need to fret because coming into next week, we do cool off a little bit. So we do get a little bit of relief from these crazy warm temperatures we are seeing. But let's take a look at our evening forecast and what we can expect. We're going to start at 88 degrees by 6 p.m. tonight, and then we stay pretty warm for most of the night in the 80s, but then we do cool off to 7 78 degrees by 10 o'clock tonight. So if you're going to take your pet out for a nice nightly stroll, enjoy the nice weather, but be sure to have some water with you so you can stay hydrated. Now let's take a look at our highs for tomorrow. Our friends up north have absolutely beautiful weather, perfect weather to go hiking and just enjoy nature. We have 70 degrees in Flagstaff and 72 degrees in the Grand Canyon, but it's a very different story for us here in the Valley. You're going to be at 96 degrees in Phoenix and 97 degrees in Bullhead City, as well as 99 degrees in Yuma. So we are warming up extremely here in the Valley. But with all that warm sunshine, it's a perfect time to take a dip in the pool. Maybe get a tan on, but be sure to have some sunscreen there and just enjoy the nice, refreshing, cool water. Looking into coming for our weekend, we got 97 degrees on Friday and Saturday is 96 degrees. So perfect weather to take a dip in the pool and just enjoy the lovely, the lovely water and cool yourself off there. But let's take a look at our eight day forecast. 96 degrees is our high for tomorrow, 97 on Friday and 96 on Saturday with lots and lots of sunshine. But holy smokes coming into Sunday, we jump up to triple digits, 102 degrees. So if you are going to be out and about this weekend, especially Sunday, be sure to have lots of water with you to stay hydrated, stay in the shade, wear sunscreen, wear a hat, sunglasses, just stay, stay nice and hydrated. But then we do cool off coming to next weekend into 86 degrees on Thursday. So we have a little bit of relief coming our way. For the Crockett News Weather Center, I'm Haley Forbes. A handful of California condors have died due to highly contagious avian flu spreading among the bird population. Cronkite News reporter Autry Maneshny tells us how this endangered population is even more at risk. Millie and Marble are two healthy California condors living at Liberty Wildlife, but a smaller population of their friends living in northern Arizona are in danger. According to the National Park Service, at least three condors have died testing positive for the avian flu, and five others have fallen ill. Those five are brought here for treatment and testing, with one of the birds dying after arrival. The reason we're worried about the California condors is because they are an endangered species. There's a very small amount of them that are out there in the wild. This strand of the virus is known as HPAI, and is highly contagious, especially during migration season. It first began spreading in Europe and made its way to the U.S. It is unlikely for humans to catch this virus, but there have been some rare cases. HPAI is spread by bird-to-bird -bird contact. It can be spread through feces. It can be spread to an animal that ingests an infected carcass. Signs of illness include lethargy, lack of coordination, or holding their head in an unusual position. That's kind of the biggest thing that most people are going to cue in on is that bird isn't acting right. It's acting really quiet um, or even acting nice, um, approachable, that sort of thing. As of 2022, there are about 561 California condors in the world and 347 of them live in the wild. These numbers have increased compared to 2021. But even still, the effects of the avian flu and other stressors like lead poisoning can be detrimental to the condor population. There's this web of life that we live in and condors are a part of that and making sure that they maintain and continue to be a part of that is, is really important. In Phoenix, Atria Maneshny, Cronkite News. I'm Sammy Miller. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. Find out how two newcomers to ASU baseball have developed a chemistry on the diamond next on Cronkite News. We tell ourselves stories as a nation. These stories need to be highlighted. They need to be explored. We're the dreamers. How serious is America's commitment to looking at its history? How can we learn from the past? <gasps> Put your head up. Douglas said, you're going to look me in the eye and see my humanity. It's illuminating. I'm seeing the expansiveness of my history. It's pretty great. There's so much richness to black life and black culture. I think the story of Muslims in America is the story of America. Tonight, they are free. 
cannot imagine how excited you must have been. It's a wonderful feeling. This is why we do this. It makes me even more committed to struggling for a better world. Welcome. How utterly charming. Mm -mm. Are you ready to get it going? How does an English fan come to be Italian Riviera? A fresh start. Can I trust you? Are you ready for the show? You can't be afraid to show them what you've got. What you want. Are we having a party? Of course, the more the merrier. I love this place. It's my home now. Traveling paradise. I can't do it on my own. This is revenge. There are consequences. Be careful. Nothing like this. Nothing like this. Oh. You look like you need rescue. Tell me all. What is it that you want? I just want to let go. <laughs> I choose how I live. There is the passion that I've been looking for. Welcome to the Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Sammy Miller. The Suns finished their first round playoff series last night against the Clippers 136 to 130 in game five. Devin Booker was unbelievable last night with 47 points and 10 assists. The first player in NBA history with 45 and 10 in a series clinching game. The Suns outscored the Clippers 50 to 24 in the third quarter and closed them out in the first series clincher at home since 2007. This also marked the Suns 77th straight sellout crowd at the Footprint Center. Monty Williams was candid about Devin Booker's offense in the third quarter. He was doing what Book does. There were times where he was taking what the defense gave him and then there were times where he just went and it didn't matter. Um, and when he's going like that, we're not calling many plays. It's all about concepts and, and looking at the environment. The Suns will take on the Denver Nuggets in round two. Game one is on Saturday night in Denver. And ASU baseball has recently been red hot, especially thanks to two players who share more similarities than just their first name. Matt Venezia brings us the bond of Luke Kieschel and Luke Hill. Sun Devil baseball continues to roll, and two new players to this year's roster have played as advertised. Junior transfer second baseman Luke Kieschel and true freshman shortstop Luke Hill lead the Sun Devils in multiple categories. The main reason for their successes, however, is because of the bond the two Lukes have. Luke Kieschel is kind of, kind of the big brother uh, to Luke Hill, I guess, and um, you know, there's times when you know Luke Hill makes a, a freshman mistake or a, a young guy mistake, and. Keisha, you can just see him boiling inside and he gets, he gets mad. And I say, handle it, man. You, you're getting paid babysitting hours. You got to go handle him. Both Lukes showed up for the Sun Devils in the winning effort as the middle infielders combined for two home runs as well as a handful of RBIs for ASU. The relationship that Luke Hill and Luke Kieschel have built with each other both on the field and off the field started in the offseason and it's showing up at the right time. Sometimes you guys got to feed off each other and, and Keisha has done an outstanding job with him and, and continuing to, to progress and, uh, and teach him, I guess, as a, as a teammate out there. A shortstop and a second baseman's chemistry should go hand in hand. It takes time to have that interchangeable versatility up the middle. But for two players that have played just over half a season together, they seem to be having a ton of fun. Honestly, uh, a couple days ago, I took a bracelet from Luke Hill and it's got me a lot of hits. <laughs> a lot of them. I will take 100% so, credit for that. I think, it's the, I think it's the power in the bracelet, honestly. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> the Lukes up the middle remain everyday lineup pieces for Willie Bloomquist on a Sun Devil team that has had an incredible two-year turnaround. In Phoenix, Matt Venezia, Cronkite News. 13-time state football champion Saguaro kicked off their first spring practice yesterday under new head coach Zach Hill. Hill and the Sabercats face a challenging road to the Open State Championship and are familiar with the fact that no matter the level of football, preparation begins now. And they're already a very respected program. Saguaro has high expectations for how Hill will propel this team to another state championship, starting with fine-tuning in the spring.
Love where we're at. You know, I think that, like I said, I think that the energy's good, the effort's there. I think the guys are excited about what's going on. And in the spring, you're, lear you're, you're figuring out the depth. You know, obviously me being a new coach here, I'm just trying to figure out all the guys in each position and, and what, what can they do and give everybody opportunities. Car enthusiasts are coming together every Thursday in Irwindale, California to test their street racing prowess. Cameron Dean from our Los Angeles Bureau went to a recent drag racing event where drivers brought the thunder. From sideshows to drag races, the car scene in Los Angeles has always been big. But these street events can be risky. Irwindale Speedway's Thursday Night Thunder offers a solution to this problem. An amateur drift and drag race event held every week. Actually, on a night like tonight, 90 some of the percent of the cars are going to be hard street tire cars and um, they don't do a lot of prep typically, so we look forward to doing this every week. This is a racetrack, <laughs> but you don't need to have a racetrack to come out here. I come in my daily, I come in my racetrack, I come in my girl's car, it doesn't really matter. You get to meet new people, you get to be active out here, no trouble, no ending, so it's good. The event not only has offered a fix to Angelino's car addiction, but has brought the car community closer together. Somebody came up to me and we started talking and goes like, hey, you need everything, just come ahead, ask, don't be shy. It brings kind of a nice community of racers together. Street racing can be extremely dangerous. And for some, this weekly car event has been life-saving. I'll be honest with y'all with street racing. I should have been there about 20 years ago. This is a safe way, a safe place to have people over here. You want to know what your car does, you know, so it's a fun place to come to. The Thursday Night Thunder has been an oasis for automobile lovers. Drivers hope that Irwindale Speedway will host more weekly events like this going into the weekend. In Irwindale, California, I'm Cameron Dean, Cronkite News. Well, that's it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Let's send it back to the desk. Thank you, Sammy. Still to come on Cronkite News. Just like Bill and Ted back in the 80s, our Ryan Tismaneski went on his own adventure in Phoenix. How the final locations of a cult movie classic filmed in the Valley are being remembered. Newscasting has changed a lot since the time of Walter Cronkite. That's why here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism, you can learn the studio production skills of today in real time. Whether you want to work audio, direct, technical direct, design graphics, or you can even run the floor. It's all part of the Television Production and Graphics Lab here at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism. We're going on in three, two... Did you know newsrooms today are looking for bilingual journalists? Cronkite Noticias prepares you to cover diverse communities. In Cronkite Noticias, you will obtain an unforgettable experience. Nopales como este. The Ducey. Van a tumbar. Cronkite Noticias. And develop your skills with the latest technology. Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communications Phoenix Sports Bureau provides students with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in sports journalism. From covering local high schools, colleges, and the pros, students get the opportunity to go live from our Facebook shows covering local, collegiate, and pro sports in the Valley. From digital reporting, broadcast, social media, and producing, there's opportunities for all. For more, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. A former Valley hotspot will be hosting a cold classic movie screening before it is demolished. Ryan Tismaneski joins us from Metro Center with details on how the mall and other places in the Valley had a role in the movies. Next month, Metro Center and Harkins plan to show a screening of the 1980s cult classic Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Now, you may be wondering why. Well, while I don't have a time traveling phone booth, I could do my best to take it back in time to show you how the Valley played an important part in the film. These sites all setting the scene for the movie. While the story takes place in San Dimas, California, a good chunk of it was actually shot here in Phoenix. Back in the 80s, Phoenix looked a bit different. Like Metro Center, things have changed. Today's shopping centers were yesterday's movie sets. Data centers were high schools and Circle K was, well, Circle K. Although many of them have rebranded or changed their looks, you can still visit places where the movie was shot. You may already have without knowing, especially in Tempe, as they're all pretty close drives to each other. 
Golfland, Sunsplash, and Mesa, and Tempe Village Lanes are two of the locations that still bear a little resemblance to how they looked back at the time of filming, but others have changed drastically. Original filming locations like the bowling alley and water park are still standing today, but what about this shopping center behind me in Carefree? Well, it actually used to be a movie studio hosting an outdoor western town and sound stages. Examples of things filmed here besides Bill and Ted include the new Dick Van Dyke show and Raising Arizona. Although some of the other locations haven't been demolished, they don't look the same. The iconic Circle K, where strange things were afoot, closed a few years ago and is now called Corner Market. Coronado High School also remodeled, but the mural featured in the movie is still there. The screening at Metro Center is currently planned for May 21st with more details to be provided in the coming weeks. Don't forget, be excellent to each other. In Phoenix, Ryan Tizmaneski, Cronkite News. Well, thank you, Ryan. That was a most excellent report indeed. And with that, that's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.